2011 Ford F-150 with a 5.0 Coyote engine. Got a coolant leak coming from the heater core inlet pipe. Gonna show you guys how to replace that. Up your hood. Once you get your hood open here, this is gonna be the heater core inlet pipe. So it goes from your heater core down to the engine here. And if I zoom in, you can totally tell that this one is leaking at the quick connect uh, fitting there. You can see it's been leaking for a while there. It's all dried up and everything else. So this is the pipe we're gonna be replacing. So I'm gonna go ahead and just drain the coolant down just enough to get it past those two hoses there so we don't make a huge mess there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull off our coolant reservoir cap here. Next, come down to the uh, passenger side here, the radiator, and you're gonna see your uh, drain plug right there. It's gonna be the red cap. I'll go ahead and zoom in here so you guys can see it better. And then I'm gonna take a 3 8 inch hose. I'm gonna stick that on the little nipple hanging off of there. And then we'll go ahead and start draining this. I'm gonna drain it into a nice clean container cause I am gonna reuse this coolant. So like I said, I'm just gonna stick that on there. Take this down into my clean container. And then to get that drain plug loose, you're gonna use a flathead screwdriver. So just reach up in here, get on that plug. Screw that, and it'll start flowing out of there. I'm not going to pull it out all the way. Just loosen it up enough to get it flowing. So about like that. So I'm going to call that about good on the coolant. You can see this is the uh, quart mark on this side, and I've drained about four and a half quarts out of it right now. So I think that's plenty enough. So let's go ahead and close up the drain valve here. So go ahead and close that up. Here's just another view of it. You can access it from this side as well. Let's get that closed. So once you get that drain valve all tightened up on the radiator, come back up top. Let's see if we can get our hose off now. I think I'll start on the engine side here. So this is a quick disconnect hose. So there's two tabs that you'll squeeze in together to lift this off. But I think to get a little better access, I'm gonna get this PCV hose out of the way. So if you notice that gray tab there, what you can do is just kind of lift that up, and pull it, and then just kind of push on it. And then this should pop off of here, this hose. Just like that. So there's that tab, so you'll lift it out of that. And then you'll push it and then you'll push kind of downward and then pop that off of there. And then you can just kind of tilt that to the side there. That'll give us a little better access to this hose here. So here's the white tab on this side. So you can see it moves it inside there. So if you can get this one undone and then the one underneath, you may have to just kind of tilt this hose a little bit to get access to the other side. Try to get your finger down in there. And you may need to push down on the hose. So I got that one squeezed on the back there. And then try and do this one. Try to pop this off of here. Let's try that again. There we go. So it still makes a little bit of a mess. So just be prepared for that. And I'll get my screwdriver and I'll pop this off and I'll show you guys. Turn this so it doesn't leak everywhere. Let's get you some rags to soak any of this up here. So you can see it still wants to leak quite a bit of cooling out of there. So just make sure you got a couple rags there to soak some of that up. So once that's done soaking, go ahead and get your rag out of here. And then I'll show you this connector on here. So if you get a Phillips or a flathead, just kind of get up under here. There's so much goo from the coolant here. Let's 
just does not want to come off of there. There we go. So that's what that looks like. So if you notice on here, these are those two tabs you're going to squeeze together because this will just go inside of here like this. So if you squeeze these two together, that kind of relieves the clip part right there and then you can pull it off. So I'm going to go ahead and just clean this up really quick with my rag. Get all this old cooling off of here and that real quick. Once you get that all cleaned up, go ahead and grab your flathead. We're going to disconnect it from this other hose right here. So you got this clip. So you can just actually just unclip it like that. Get that kind of out of the way there. So now the hard part is getting back in here. You're going to have the same style clips as what we had up front here. So it's going to be the same exact style, but it's just going right back to your firewall here. So you're going to have to reach up in there, try to undo those clips, and then pull this hose off. So I'm trying to get you guys the best angle here, but as you can see, there's a white tab on the bottom there, which means the other one will be on top. So I'm going to try to squeeze these together while pushing in on the hose. It's just not easy. And let me see if I can get a better angle with this camera out of the way. All right, guys, so I was able to get it. I just had to get the camera out of the way. But you need to squeeze those tabs. Um, it just sucks because you have to do them both at the same time. Uh, you can't do one side and then do the other. They both have to be squeezed together in order to get that off. So just keep working at it, and then it'll come off of there like that. You can see our uh, clip is on there, so I'll have to get that off real quick. Get your old hose out of here. Then, of course, get your old clip off of there. Using your flathead. If you need to, uh, you can turn this. just really hard to see under here. And if you guys break this, the new one does have, uh, the new hose does have a new one of these clips. So if you need to break it off, go ahead. Which is what I might end up doing because I can't barely see what's going on under here kind of just have to go off a of feel but if you can get one side and then kind of pull forward on it well there it goes it just broke anyway so get that clip off of there Let me get some cutters and I'll just cut that off real quick. Okay, so I finally got that cut off. So let's take a look at our uh, old hose and our new one here. So this is the old one. And let me just get this out of here. I'll show you. There's an O-ring inside here. That starts to leak. You can see, not sure if you guys can see that, but it's kind of deformed right inside there. So that's what ends up leaking, causing this uh, hose to leak. And this is a common issue on these 5 Coyote engines. So I just got this one off of Amazon. It's the Dorman 2 or Dorman 626-721. I'll put a link in the description for it. But you can see it's pretty much just like the factory OEM one. Same size and everything, same curves. And then uh, it does come with brand new clips on here as well for both sides. So let's go ahead and uh, stick this on. And then I am just going to take a little grease here. This is just lube plate assembly lube, kind of. I'm just going to put a tiny bit on my finger here. And I'm just going to lube up those two O-rings that are inside there because I don't want to stick that on dry and then it gets caught or something. So just take a little bit of that. And you can see 
just kind of lube up those two o-rings that are in there on each side just so it's not going on there dry something kind of like that so grab your new hose i'm going to start out with the heater core side there go ahead and get that slid on and all you got to do is just push this on pretty much so get that on there you should hear it click there we go and then just give it a pull make sure it ain't gonna come off of there just like that and then of course go ahead and get your other end on there same thing click that into place just like that give it a tug that looks good go ahead and hook up your crankcase ventilation hose here same thing that'll just push on there and click and just like that get your clip back into place for your other hose so now let's go ahead and start filling so grab a funnel now i will be reusing the uh coolant that i drained out which was the orange stuff from ford and uh, i'll put a link in the description for one of these containers they come in pretty handy you can drain it straight into here and then just pour it back into the uh, coolant reservoir here but i probably will have to add some just because when we poured or when we pulled that uh, coolant hose some of the coolant did come out of there as well and i'll be topping it off with this peak antifreeze coolant this does say it's for GM vehicles, but it's the exact same stuff for Ford. If you look at uh, Prestone, it actually says GM and Ford on it for their orange stuff. This says concentrate, but I have pre-mixed this with 50% uh, distilled water from a previous project. You just wanna make sure it's the OAT technology, organic acid technology. So I'll top it off with this since it already has the orange stuff. Um, but you can also get the Ford stuff and Ford has switched now to this yellow uh, coolant from the orange to the yellow, but they say this stuff can be mixed with the orange. So if you wanna pick this up, you can use this as well. So either one, the orange or the yellow, just make sure it's for Fords and it'll work just fine. So let's go ahead and start filling. And then your cold mark's gonna be right here, this top line. So we're gonna fill it up to that. And then if we need to add some more, we, should, we will. And then as you guys can see, I am going over the full mark here just because this, this amount came out and it wasn't overfilled. There's just air in the system right now. So once that air gets burped out of there, it'll go down. Another thing you can do to help burp it is just squeeze this upper radiator hose. Give that a few good squeezes here. So you can see that did go down a little bit. Well, let's go ahead and uh, put our cap on now. Again, just make sure you're above the cold fill line there. So now we'll go ahead and start it. And go ahead and turn on your uh, heater. Check your pipe, make sure you got no leaks coming from it. That looks good. Same with back here, no leaks there. And then down below here at your drain valve for your radiator, doesn't seem to be leaking there. So I'm going to go ahead and let this idle. We'll let the uh, temperature gauge get up to normal operating temperature so our thermostats open up and then the uh, coolant starts flowing through the heater core okay so i went ahead and let this idle for a while as you can see our coolant temp is at normal operating temperature now our thermostat did open up and we got hot air coming out of the vents so it's flowing through the uh, heater core so now we can go ahead and shut this off okay so if you notice there is a little bit of steam or smoke coming off the engine here that's because when you pull that old hose there it's going to leak down into that little valley there on the engine and then the heat of the engine is just going to burn it off so you will get a little 
steam or smoke coming from that. But if you take a look, you can see our hose is still holding up. No coolant leaking. Same thing with back there. And then if you take a look over here at our coolant reservoir, so the level did rise just a hair. Uh, that's because coolant expands with heat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and let this sit for a few hours. I'll probably just let it sit overnight. And then I'll check this in the morning because that level, once the coolant cools down, it will drop. So I probably will have to top that off with just a little coolant. So go ahead and let that cool and then just top that off with coolant and uh, you should be good. So that's gonna be it for the video. Again, this was a 2011 Ford F-150 with the 5.0 Coyote engine. Went ahead and replaced the heater core inlet coolant hose. Uh, it's a common issue on these uh, 5.0s where it starts to leak at that uh, connector there. So hopefully this video helps you out. If it does, why don't you subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos. I'm gonna have quite a few on this truck alone and uh, I'll see you in the next video, thanks.